Salutations. I'm Jesco, and you're watching Game Dev Made Easy. In the video today, we are going to explore state in Dragon Ruby. Dragon Ruby is very special with how it can handle objects, and has some built-in features that makes moving and manipulating objects easier. args.state is one of those features. What is args.state? It is an instant state that GTK holds internally and hands to your tick function as an argument every frame. It lives longer than a tick function. As a matter of fact, it lives for the entire life of the application and is stored and always available inside the engine but cannot be accessed like a global function. Without further ado, let's dive into the code and see how args.state works. Sign up for my Discord server to chat with me and other like-minded individuals. Link is in the description. Now, before we write code that utilizes state, we need to write code that doesn't. Inside of your main.rb file, clear out everything. Is it clear yet? Did you do it? Ugh, fine. I'll wait. Alright, now that you have finally caught up with me, write def tick args and directly underneath it, write end. We are basically defining the main entry point for Dragon Ruby at this point, and since ending a function block requires the end keyword, we went ahead and did so. Create a line space in between the def and end lines. Within that line spacing, write x underscore position is set to be 100. We are creating this variable to store the horizontal position of the object. On the next line, let's create the object we want to manipulate. By writing args dot outputs dot solids less than sign less than sign, then adding the opening bracket which is preceded by the x underscore position variable, comma, 250, comma, 50, comma, 50, comma, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, and a closing bracket. We have successfully told Dragon Ruby to draw the solid at this specific x position, y position, width, height, and this specific red, green, and blue value which in this case is black. Now, for the final line of code to make all of this complete. x underscore position plus equals 10, which should make the x position update every frame by 10, right? This is exactly what I've been waiting for. Let's hit play mode and see what happens. All right, so the solid is drawn at the x position being at 100, but it never changes. Now why is that? My name is Jeff. The reason this happens is due to how Dragon Ruby works internally. So what happens is that every frame, the array values are wiped and repopulated with the default values to draw on the screen every frame, which in this case is a tick. The x underscore position is a local variable which goes away at the end of the function since it is a local variable and thus will always return the value 100. Utilizing state fixes this issue and allows for values to increment every frame. So, let's just get into how to write the code and how it works, shall we? Get on with it! Yes! Get on with it! By the way, don't forget that if you find this tutorial useful, please consider throwing a buck or two towards my PayPal, or even consider joining my Patreon. Links are in the description box below. <clears throat> Enough shilling. Back to the tutorial. Get on with it! Let's clear out all the code that resides within the tick function. Got it done? Good. Time to continue. We are going to write args.state.x double pipe equals 60. The double pipe equals is an operator that assigns a value, much like the plain equals symbol, which is our classic assignment operator, 
but will only complete the assignment if the left side of our operation returns false or nil. In Ruby, nil is the same thing as null. The cool thing about state is that we don't have to define what anything after it is attached to. We can write it and use it the way we want, and Dragon Ruby will apply it as we call it. In this scenario, X is going to designate the horizontal axis position. On the next line, we are going to add args.state.y double pipe equals 250. We want this to be the vertical axis and the position on said axis. The next line is going to be args.state.w double pipe equals 50. The W will stand for width. Following that is going to be args.state.h double pipe equals 50. The H stands for height. We have four lines left to write out. This is going to be args.state.r double pipe equals zero. The R is the red color designated in RGB values. The next line is going to be args.state.g double pipe equals zero. The G is the green color designated in RGB values. The following line is going to be args.state.b double pipe equals zero. The B is the blue color designated in RGB values. The last line is going to be args.state.speed double pipe equals 10. This is going to store our speed value. That wasn't too bad, but now we need to use these values somewhere. Enter one of the six main primitive types in Dragon Ruby. We will utilize the solids primitive to just draw a filled in square. Write args.outputs.solids. This is the basic syntax for accessing the primitive types found in Dragon Ruby. Add a space in between solids and write two less than symbols. In Ruby, the two less than symbols back to back has many meanings. For our case, we are appending values to an array. Add an opening and closing bracket. This will create an array. Inside, we will set the values for what the solids primitive type requires. It requires an X position, Y position, width, height, R, G, and B value in its full form. Inside of the brackets, write args.state.x, comma, args.state.y, comma, args.state.w, comma, args.state.h, comma, args.state.r, comma, args.state.g, comma, and args.state.b. We have defined our solid with the values it requires, and if we were to launch dragonruby.exe, it would just show a black box in the scene. Let's actually make it move. To do so, all we need to do is add one more line. Write args.state.x plus equals 10. This is saying that we want to add 10 to the value every time the state is called. And there we have it. We have successfully made this box move across the screen. But why don't we go ahead and expand upon it a little more? Remove the args.state.x plus equals 10 from the editor. What we are going to do is write a simple if statement and then add our movement code back. The if statement is just going to check if our position is greater than a specific amount. If it is, then we want to reset the position. Write if args.state.x is greater than or equal to 1080. Make sure to have an in statement below this line. Inside of the if statement, make sure to indent one time and write args.state.x is set to be 60. Outside of the in statement, write args.state.x plus equals 10. If you press the play button, you will see the black box move across the screen, and when it reaches the end, it will reset the position to be 60, and then continue moving to the right. That was pretty cool and all, but 
we can go one step further with this. Let's create our own LERP function similar to what we would see in other game engines. Go ahead and delete the if statement and the movement code as we don't need that anymore. Outside of the ticks in statement, we will define a new function. Write def lerp parentheses start comma stop comma step closing parentheses. While Ruby does not need the parentheses, I find it easier to read with multiple parameters. Make sure to add another line and write in to close the function declaration. Inside of the lerp function, write parentheses 1.0 minus step closing parentheses multiplied by start plus step multiplied by stop. This is a more precise lerp function that guarantees that our v is going to equal our vector value when step is equal to 1. Simple graph mathematics, really. Linear interpolation is very interesting and fun, which also happens to have extensions for more spatial dimensions, as well as forms the basis for spline interpolation and Bezier surfaces, as well as 3D meshes. I would personally suggest getting the book called Curves and Surfaces for Computer Graphics by David Salomon to really dive into this. Let's go back to the tick function and add our code that utilizes this function to move the position. Write args.state.x is set to be lerp, open parentheses, 0, comma, 1200, comma, open parentheses, math.sign, open parentheses, args.state.speed, multiplied by args.state.tick, underscore count, divided by 200, closing parentheses, plus one closing parentheses divided by two closing parentheses. Now let's break this beast of a function call down. We are setting the x position of the object to be the result of lerping between the values of 0 and 1200. The step is the most complicated part of this entire source. We sign the speed multiplied by the tick count and divide those results by 200. This will smooth out the speed to a more practical speed range. Then, we add the sign results by 1 and divide by 2. This will always lock the movement range to be on screen. Launch the Dragon Ruby executable file and watch as our little black box scrolls side to side on our screen in the loop. And now you know how to utilize args.state in Dragon Ruby. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment, share with your friends, and subscribe for more game dev related content with various game engines here on Game Dev Made Easy.